spacecraft on internal power. Nice launch check and countdown net, pad is clear. 10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence 7, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 7.20 p.m. Eastern time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Good evening and welcome to our launch coverage of Intelsat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 for our customer, Intelsat. My name is Jesse Anderson and I'm a production engineering manager here at SpaceX and I'm joining you today from our SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. This mission will launch the first two of seven satellites that will replace and refresh a large part of Intelsat's North America Galaxy fleet. The Galaxy 33 satellite will offer continuity for North America cable distribution customers, including HBO, Fox Networks, Stars, and Bally Sports. Galaxy 34 will become Intelsat's new protection satellite, which means it's a backup satellite for the Constellation. Now we'll share more details about the capabilities of the Intelsat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 Constellation a bit later in the webcast. 
Now, for those of you following along, this mission marks SpaceX's 184th overall mission, 46th this year, and third launch in the last 31 hours. A little over 30 hours ago, we launched NASA's Crew-5 astronauts to the International Space Station from historic Launch Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Dragon arrived at station with the astronauts on board about two hours ago, and Crew-5 has ingressed the International Space Station. And there you can see them on the International Space Station live on your screen. <laughs> There's Commander Nicole Mand there on the screen. And around this time yesterday, we launched our most recent Starlink mission from Space Launch Complex 4E from Vandenberg Space Force Station. Which brings us to the mission at hand, Intelsat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34, marking our triple header for the week. Now on your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket set to launch the Intelsat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 satellites from Space Launch Complex 40. With liftoff currently just under nine minutes from now, let's get to know a little bit more about the rocket that you see on your screen. The two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle stands 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than a 21-story building. And then the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. Its objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the rocket. Today's booster is flying for the 14th time, having previously supported GPS-3 Space Vehicle 3, TurkSat 5A, Transporter 2, and 10 Starlink missions. Now above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Intelsat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 satellites to orbit. Now the satellites are safely enclosed inside of the 17 foot diameter payload fairing. And that is what you see there on your screen. Now that sits on top of the second stage and it's made of a carbon composite material. The fairing protects the satellites on their way to orbit. And once the vehicle and payload is out in space, we jettison the fairing halves approximately a little over three minutes into flight. And lastly, the large trusted structure that you see there next to Falcon 9 is called the transport erector, the TE. Now we use that to roll the vehicle out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. Now at liftoff, it will retract in order to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. And while we wait for TE retraction, here's more about the capabilities Engine chill of has started. Here's more about the capabilities of today's payloads. Intelsat operates the largest integrated space and ground network in the world, bringing reliable, resilient connectivity to billions globally. But as the foundational architects of communications technology, we're never done finding new ways to bring value to our customers. Each launch is a critical step to ensure long-term continuity for the services that we deliver. For some customers, it's about reliability of their mission critical service. For others, it's about getting the runway to grow their business. And as our customers' needs grow, our network is evolving with them. At the same time that we're developing the first 5G software-defined ecosystem, we're continuing to strengthen our existing fleet. Galaxy 33, will be used as a primary cable distribution asset, reaching 99.999% of all US cable subscribers. Galaxy 34, on the other hand, will be a protection satellite, which will ensure very high reliability for our cable distribution services. It will also be used to contribute news and sports content on an occasional basis. These new satellites will be substantially more powerful, continuing to provide the same broad, consistent coverage as the ones they're replacing, while also helping to broaden future capabilities for the organizations we serve. Those satellites are extremely important because they're gonna help vacate the lower end of the C-band spectrum, which will be used by the mobile network operators to expand their 5G networks. 
Like the saying is, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a lot of people to build a satellite. The entire Northrop Grumman team is just very proud to manufacture and deliver Galaxy 33 and 34 to Innosat and support their commitment to their end customers around the globe. We are very fortunate we have some of the best people in the industry and everybody contributed to this big success. Now we are currently awaiting the retraction of the transport erector, which should begin here shortly. In preparation for this, the TE clamps. Retract in progress. There's that call out that the retraction will begin now. The TE clamps will begin to open first, and then once they are fully open, you could see the, the moving there on your screen just below the payload fairing. Once that is fully open, then the TE can begin to retract away from the vehicle. Now at T0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And really incredible view of the vehicle with the sunset in the background. Looks like the clamp arms are now fully open, so the TE is moving very slowly, but it is moving away from Falcon 9. Now the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and it will retract away even further away uh, in preparation for launch. And it looks like the TE is now fully reclined. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Stage one, LOX load is complete. Great call out there. LOX loading is now complete on the first stage. The second stage should complete around the T minus two minute mark. And you can see a little bit of white clouds there. That is normal. This is because the vehicle uh, has chilled liquid oxygen. And the clouds that you see are the chilled gas above the liquid oxygen tank surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. So when that gas comes in contact with the warmer, humid, moist air of Florida, it condenses into clouds or water. And there you can see it a little better on your screen. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the Rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside the T minus two second mark, we light the Merlin M1D engines for liftoff. Stage two locks load is complete. There's that call out that locks load and propellant loading on stage two is complete. That concludes propellant loading on Falcon 9. The Intel Sat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. Weather is still looking good Ground for- Ground gas closeouts. Weather is still looking good for T0 and the range is green for launch. With that, we are proceeding into just the last minute of the terminal count. We are coming up on Falcon 9 in startup. Again, that is where the internal flight computers take over the launch countdown. And the first and second stage will also begin to pressurize for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's that call out. Now just waiting for the launch director's last call. Go for launch. And excellent news. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with Intel Sat Galaxy 33, Galaxy 34 payloads. T minus 30 seconds. Launch abort is started. Abort.
And as you just heard on the countdown, we have a hold, hold, hold. The launch countdown has aborted. We are going to check in with the teams to see if we can get a little bit more information and we will see if we can bring some information back to you. If you're just now joining us, we did have a hold on the countdown at the T minus 30 second mark. We are still awaiting a little bit more information from the team, so just give us a moment and we will get back to you. Now, if you're just now joining us, we did have a, an abort on the countdown at the T-minus 30 second mark. This was an auto abort by Falcon 9. Now, prior to the countdown, uh, the countdown was proceeding nominally. Now, keeping in mind the purpose of the countdown is to help us catch potential issues prior to flight. There are thousands of ways a launch can go wrong and only one way that it can go right. Given that we are overly cautious on the ground and if the team or the vehicle sees anything that looks even slightly off, they'll stop the countdown. Now, overall, the vehicle and payload are in good health. The next launch opportunity is tomorrow at 7.06 p.m. Eastern Time. Hopefully, you'll join us again for our next launch attempt. Until then, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you again next time.